nutrition fam. We are finishing vitamins and minerals. Thank the Lord, we're almost done with them. Today we're wrapping up by talking about vitamin and mineral supplements. Sorry, my hair's gotten really long in quarantine and I like finally have the ponytail that I always dreamed of. Um, anyways, so we're talking about vitamin and mineral supplements. And I think for most people and most students, the baseline question is, should I be taking vitamin and mineral supplements? Do I need to take them? Will they make me healthier? Will they cure all my ills? So, do they? And the short answer is no. You Most people do not need to be taking vitamin and mineral supplements because you're getting enough vitamins and minerals in the food that you're eating. But there are some groups for which taking vitamin and mineral supplements might be a good idea slash can enhance health. So who are those people? Okay, so people who might benefit from taking supplements. The first answer is kind of capped and obvious, but people with nutrient deficiencies. So if you have a diagnosed nutrient deficiency, you might benefit from taking a dietary supplement. But those have to be diagnosed from a doctor, using blood work and other clinical skills or measures. So most people uh, aren't gonna have a nutrient deficiency who live in the United States and they can just go about their business. People that might need to have supplements are people who want to be pregnant or who could be pregnant, so women of childbearing age. And this is because of the folic acid needs of pregnancy and the fact that the neural tube defects develop so early in pregnancy before you know you're pregnant. So women of childbearing age wanna make sure they're getting enough folic acid just in case they become pregnant. And now that it is present and fortified in many of our foods, we don't need to worry so much about it. So you probably don't even need to take a supplement of it. But if you are really trying to become pregnant, you might take a prenatal vitamin. If you are pregnant, you wanna be taking a prenatal vitamin because in pregnancy, your needs for nutrients rise. I mean, you're growing an entire human. So you need more nutrients and that is a one instance where supplementation can be helpful. Along with pregnant women, people who are breastfeeding, so women who are breastfeeding, they are also going to perhaps need a supplement because now they're feeding another human. So again, their nutrient needs are higher and they may just need a supplement to make sure that they're meeting them appropriately. All right, next up on the supplement train, we have newborns. So we know that newborns need a vitamin K shot when they're born. So newborns are born with a sterile digestive system, so they don't have vitamin K, they need vitamin K shot. Sometimes they need some other uh, nutrient supplementation as well, but you're, it's not something that you're going to do by yourself. You're gonna to talk to your pediatrician and make sure that you're supplementing your baby appropriately. On the other end of the age spectrum, sometimes elderly people need supplements because either they're not able to eat enough food of high nutrient density for various reasons, or because their body just isn't as good as at absorbing these nutrients anymore. So for example, if you have uh, something wrong with your stomach acid or low stomach acid, then you don't have an, or you're not making enough intrinsic factor, then you're gonna have trouble absorbing vitamin B12. So if that's a common issue in older people, so then they would want a supplement of B12. All right, next up are people who are chronic dieters. So if you're chronically restricting your food intake, you may not be getting enough vitamins and minerals, and that would be one reason to supplement. Also, if you have received gastric bypass surgery, oftentimes you're not able to eat that much anymore or that much nutrient dense food that takes up a lot of space in your stomach. So you might need a supplement at least at first as well. So chronic dieting, not great for many reasons. Uh, and then also people who have like HIV or another um, illness that can cause wasting. Not if you're taking medicine and it's like well controlled and you're feeling good, but sometimes when those conditions, either you don't know you have it, so you're not taking medicine or you don't have access to medicine or all of those things that would help treat HIV now, um, you can have a wasting illness, which means like you start to lose your muscle mass and you're basically catabolizing your body instead of building is like breaking down. and that's when you might need a nutrient supplement and there's other diseases where that happens as well. Uh, drug and alcohol abuse can be a time when you need supplements. So remember, Simon, for example, has an interesting relationship with alcohol abuse. So you might need a supplement if you are dealing with a drug or alcohol abuse issue. 
If you have had surgery or burns, you might need supplements. When people are healing, they need higher doses of certain vitamins and minerals, so that's a time where you might be supplemented. And then finally, strict vegetarians or vegans may need a supplement, especially a B12, if you're unable to eat enough like nutritional yeast or supplemented grain products that would provide you with these vitamins and minerals. But if you don't fall into any of those categories, you most likely do not need to be taking a vitamin or mineral supplement. If you love taking your gummy multivitamin or your Flintstones multivitamin because it's fun for you, like, sure, it's probably not gonna be that, that hurtful. On the label, you wanna make sure that you're having a supplement that's not providing like a thousand percent of the daily value of each uh, nutrient. It's nice if they don't even provide a hundred percent of the value, daily value because you know, you're eating food, so you're gonna get some through that. However, I find it very difficult to find multivitamins that aren't providing a huge amount of each of the vitamin and minerals. So another way to do it is you take it every other day and then you're kind of like getting over the week, like half as much. So why am I telling you that most people do not need supplements? Well, mostly that is because evidence has not shown a relationship between taking a supplement and better health. And in some cases, we even see a negative association between taking a supplement and health status. So for example, beta carotene, you know, we talked about it with vitamin A. It is thought, it's an antioxidant. We thought like, oh, if you have more vitamin A, if you have more beta carotene, and you're a smoker, you'll get protection from smoking. So they did a study where they gave people mega doses of beta carotene in one group and not in the other, but the group that got the beta carotene actually had higher rates of lung cancer and they had to stop that study early because obviously that was not the intended effect. So taking more is not always better. So that is, you know, the biggest reason not to just start taking all these supplements is because sometimes they can have deleterious effects in large doses and we just don't see consistent research that shows that there's a really strong causal relationship between taking certain supplements and then having better health. Oftentimes we do see relationships between like people who are eating, you know, getting enough vitamin A, have better health, but that's because they're getting it from food and we don't know what other compounds could be in those foods that are affecting the, the relationship between vitamin A and better health or eating foods with vitamin A a better health, for example. So replicating things that we see in people's diets through supplements don't always work. And sometimes supplements, as I said, with the beta carotene can be harmful, but they can also be contaminated. So sometimes they don't have what they say they have, or they have like yucky stuff in there. And then sometimes they can also have a lot of misinformation. So we can be told that a supplement's gonna do X, but it actually is never going to do that and it's going to make you sick. This is especially true with supplements that are designed for weight loss. So never take a weight loss supplement. It's not healthy, it's not going to work for you, and it could be very, very dangerous. But for the vitamins and mineral supplements, you know, the misinformation will just come from them saying that they're going to, you know, cure this disease or prevent this disease, and then we don't really have evidence that they are actually going to do that. So there's a lot of misinformation hanging around about supplements, and that's why most people shouldn't invest in taking them. They can be quite expensive, so don't waste your money on most supplements. You might be wondering, oh my gosh, why are some supplements contaminated? How can that possibly be? And that's because the supplement industry is not very tightly regulated. They are not regulated like prescription drugs. Manufacturers of supplements do not need to show efficacy of the supplement, meaning they don't need to show that it works before they sell it. That, like, that is totally necessary for prescription drugs or vaccines. They need to do trials that show that the drug or the vaccine is more effective than a placebo. That doesn't happen with supplements. They are not regulated in that way at all. For supplements, the manufacturer does not need to show safety or effectiveness of the supplement before it goes to market. So this is much more lax than prescription or over-the-counter drugs like Tylenol or aspirin. The supplement, again, does not need to be shown that it is safe or effective. So what happens is the manufacturers are supposed to practice good manufacturing practices or GMPs, which would mean that the supplement would be 
not contaminated, would contain what it says it contains, would be efficacious, but they don't have to. It's like self-regulated. The federal government only gets involved after the supplement has been on the market. So the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, will only monitor supplements after they've been on the market. So the FDA, once a supplement is on the market, will monitor to see if there are adverse effects associated with that supplement. But you know, you don't want to be the one that dies that gets the FDA involved for taking the supplement. And that does happen. So that's how multiple weight loss drugs have gotten taken off the market is because people died while taking them, getting the FDA's attention. The FDA then said, this is clearly not safe and they pull it from the market, but the people already died. <laughs> like that's super messed up. So the way that supplements are regulated is really not in the consumer's best interest, but why are they regulated this way? Well, I'm gonna link here to a piece that John Oliver did on this, which is excellent, but it really shows that it's all about the money. So the supplement industry has paid a lot of money over the years, especially to uh, two long serving senators that in states where supplements are largely manufactured um, to keep regulation from basically not happening. Okay, so we've gone over all the reasons not to take supplements and why you shouldn't take supplements but I know that a bunch of you are still gonna take supplements. And how do I know that? I know that because I take supplements. So in the interest of full disclosure, do as I say, not as I do, I'm gonna explain to you the supplements that I take, why I take them, which ones are bullshit, and why I still continue to take them. Are you ready to see the supplements? from my cupboard. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> There's a lot there. That, look at all those. That's a lot. Okay, so let me show you what they are. First, I'm just gonna like rule out the ones that came in here because of my husband, because I don't know about those. All right, he was given Mighty Mushrooms as a Christmas present from his parents. I don't know. They're a rich source of antioxidants. The box hasn't been eaten. It's almost been a year. He has this Green Mountain CBD. I don't know if he's ever taken it. Uh, let's see, he has, oh, methyl B12. So we just talked about B12, nice. He has, oh, vitamin D3. These are all from the naturopath, so great. Uh, then he has melatonin, not open. Uh, vitamin A, not open. Uh, more, more vitamin D. This one is open, but not finished. Oh, a, a whole dropper of trace minerals. Good. Um, so those are all, those are all my husband's supplements that he does not take, but has bought because he went through a phase of the naturopath where they told him to buy all these supplements and he did it. And then he didn't take them because he doesn't like to take things. But the rest are mine. So this <laughs> section is mine. So let me walk you through. Uh, these are some integrative, these are from my acupuncture place that I used to go to. I would still go um, if it wasn't quarantine time. Um, I know you can go to the doctor, but like they're very close to you. And so I'm trying just to do essential things, but it might become essential. But this is cold and flu formula. So these were our, like Chinese herbs that um, they said would help prevent colds and flu. And I didn't really start taking them because I just didn't, but now I hold on to them because I figure if I feel any symptoms, these should uh, do the trick, hopefully. Uh, IB guard, so this is for people who have weird stomachs, and sometimes I do when I get really anxious, not like about a specific thing, but about life in general, and guess what? It's been an anxious time because 20 fucking 20. So I get, these are peppermint oil capsules, and if you take them before meals, they're supposed to help. Uh, I haven't really felt a huge effect, but I hope that they'll help. Let's see. Oh, I forgot this. This is my husband's as well. That's not mine. Ultra Preventative X. I don't even know what this is. Oh, it's a multivitamin, but it's a type of multivitamin that I would really not recommend because the percentage, I don't know if you guys can, I don't think you can see this. I'll post a photo. I'll take a photo so you can see, but the percentage of each vitamin is like 4,000% of your thiamine, 4,000%. Then, oh, that's too much for you? 
Well, you can have 2,000% of your vitamin B6. 2,000% in this one pill. So no need for food. Like this is too much, too much. He doesn't take this either. Okay, back to me. So I take elderberry syrup every day because cold and flu prevention and I just feel like it will help. Um, I have no evidence for that, but it got really hot last year and got right in because who wants to get sick in the year of COVID? No one. Um, oh, oh did that I take fish oil supplements and fish oil was, was the darling supplement for a while because it was supposed to help with heart health. I don't take it for that reason. I take it because especially in the winter, I get really dry eyes and they water constantly. So it looks like I'm constantly crying, which like this year you could be, but um, I'm not usually constantly crying. It's just my eyes are watering. But when I take my fish oil consistently, it seems to help with that. So that's why I do that. That was eye doctor recommended. Um, we have airborne that we both take sometimes. Again, we're just like throwing the kitchen sink in on the cold prevention and the respiratory illness prevention. But airborne has vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, magnesium, zinc, selenium, manganese, and sodium. So it's basically has like all your immune system boosters. And if you're feeling like you're getting a cold, it might help a little bit. It helps like in my mind, placebo, it really helps. That's good. And then the last three supplements I have are actually doctor, doctor recommended for my migraines with Aura. So that's something that started happening to me last year, super fun, when it just comes on and it's like your vision goes weird and you're like, what is happening? And then you get a headache and like some stuff happens, but that was new for last year. So always changing, always growing. Uh, so the first thing is coenzyme Q10, and the doctor said that this would help. I don't really know how, so I can't tell you much about it, but taking it, Costco brand, really nice. And this also has a very special symbol, which is called the USP symbol. So the USP label that you see here, that just means that the supplement contains what it says it contains. So in this case, it says it contains coenzyme Q10. The USP label means it's been tested and it actually does contain that. And then also it's absorbable so that your stomach can absorb it. What the USP label does not mean is that this supplement is effective. So this supplement says on the front that it's gonna do a bunch of things. It says that, I'll just read it. It says it's gonna have higher potency for greater heart support, helps maintain healthy blood pressure and promotes energy production. The USP symbol does not verify any of that. So the USP symbol is not gonna tell you that the supplement works for what the label says. It's just gonna say that supplement has what it says it has. And for me, since I'm taking this for migraines, which aren't even listed on the label, that's really what I wanna know, that it has the coenzyme Q10 that my doctor thinks I'm getting by taking it. And she actually recommended this exact brand to me, so that was really helpful too. Um, and then the other two supplements I take are the magne, these are both prescription supplements. So this is B2 and this is magnesium. And I've mentioned them before, they're both for migraine with aura and they're prescription. So the doctor is able to write a prescription for those. And there's two really great things about that. The first is that they're cheaper. So the insurance pays for them. So yay. And the second is that I know that these prescription supplements are pure. So they're pure magnesium or pure B2. I don't have to worry about their composition. So these don't need a USP symbol because they're prescription. So that's like the tour of our supplements. Super, super fun. So again, like even though I know from all of my work that I don't need to be taking supplements, you can see that I still take some. However, I feel good that the majority are just for migraine with aura and they're doctor prescribed. So that makes me feel better about them. And also the fish oil is doctor prescribed. And then the immune boosting supplements, those are not, those are desperation prescribed where I just don't wanna have a cold or flu or anything. And I just believe that those will help. But that is an example of like not evidence-based thinking. And I'd like you to have evidence-based thinking Maybe in this instance, you can do it better than me, or maybe you're like me and you just need that placebo help when you feel a cold coming on. You want something that's just gonna make you like feel a little bit better. And that's okay too. I 
If you have questions about a dietary supplement that you are taking or that you're thinking of taking, a great resource is the NIH's Office of Dietary Supplements website. They have these dietary supplement fact sheets that will give you the basics of any dietary supplement that you're taking. So for example, I talked about taking vitamin B2, which is riboflavin. If we go down here, we can find riboflavin. Then there's a consumer fact sheet. There's one in Spanish and there's a health professional fact sheet. If you go to the consumer fact sheet, it will tell you what is riboflavin, what does it do, how much do you need, what foods provide it, what kinds of supplements are available, are you getting enough, what happens if you don't get enough, what is an effect of riboflavin supplements on health, and then it highlights migraine headache and it says that some studies show that riboflavin supplements can be helpful but others don't. Um, so med medical experts recommend trying riboflavin because it hasn't been shown to have any harm. So that's the kind of information you can get from the consumer fact sheet. The um, health professional fact sheet just has more detailed information and you can get tons of references and other boiled down info on all these different supplements, which are so helpful. So if you have questions about dietary supplements, I'd really recommend using this website because they have all sorts of great info that can help you make informed decisions. If you're taking supplements for specific reasons, you want to check with your doctor, you want to make sure that you're not just willy-nilly taking supplements, perhaps other than a multivitamin, you could take a multivitamin if it was going to make you feel better or your life more fun. And, but other than that, I would check with the doctor before starting any specific supplements. All right. Okay.